Good morning and Merry Christmas. Welcome to Trinity on this first Sunday after Christmas. I hope you had a lovely season and glad you gathered back together for worship today. Whether you are a first time visitor with us or you've worshiped with us several times, we are glad you are here worshiping together. I hope you'll take a moment to sign the friendship form, which you'll find online in your bulletin. This gives us an opportunity to know the names of those worshiping. Today in the sanctuary, we have beautiful flowers. They are given by Jenny and Mike Hobbs to the glory of God and in loving memory of Eve and Jim Dunaway, Betty and Theodore Hobbs, and Geneva and James Rich. A few announcements that we do have coming up in the life of the church. We are in the process of taking elder nominations. Elders serve and help govern our congregation. It's a three-year term, and they have many responsibilities throughout the congregation. I hope you will consider being an elder or nominating others. We need all nominations by January 17th. And as we start this new year coming up soon, there are three new adult education opportunities. One will be on Thursday evenings in January, and the other two will come on Sunday mornings. I hope you'll spend time with your bulletin and other online publications from Trinity to learn more about subject matter and times and join us for these educational opportunities. Friends, we come together after a season of Advent and waiting, after celebrating Jesus' birth, and we come to worship God. Let us join together in our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the earth, young and old alike, men and women together. Praise the Lord.
We know our shortcomings all too well. We know all the ways that we have strayed from goodness and justice through complicity or dull apathy. As part of the committed relationship of faith, we take care to make the time and space to acknowledge the ways that we have not loved God and neighbor in this time of worship. And so we come together to confess. Let us pray. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. As Christians, while we know that sin is a part of our story, we know that it is not the conclusion. In this season, we celebrate the light of Jesus Christ sent into our midst and know that the God of grace has redeemed us, that we are forgiven, and that we are deeply and wonderfully loved. Let us praise God for this assurance, and we be at such great peace that we can't help but share it with others. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us pray. We come here this morning for a little perspective in a world that seems to be out of control. We come here to be reminded that we are not alone, that you care about your creation, that you know each one of us and call us by name. Startle us with your truth and open our minds and our hearts to the good news of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from the book of Psalms. We are reading the 148th Psalm, found towards the end of the book. Let us listen for what the psalmist is telling us today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all God's angels. Praise the Lord, all God's hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, you in the highest heavens, you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for God commanded and they were created. God established them forever and ever. God fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy winds fulfilling their command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together, let them praise the name of the Lord, for God's name alone is exalted. God's glory is above heaven and earth. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all God's faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to God. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A few weeks ago, the campus of Trinity was full to the brim with our greatest drive through Christmas pageant ever. There were cows and sheep, camels and donkeys. There were census takers and innkeepers, wise men and shepherds. The heavens were well represented with angels and shining stars leading the way. Travelers joined us from Moore's Mill, the line of traffic creeping towards the parking lot, young and old together. Now, as far as I could see, there were no sea monsters represented, but all were gathered to praise the name of the Lord. Our psalm today is a bit like a Christmas pageant. Coming the Sunday after Christmas, it's as if the whole nativity cast of characters has gathered on one page to join the heavenly host in praising God. Christmas opens us up to the recognition that we are a part of something bigger, something bigger than ourselves. We are a part of a whole creation. This psalm is a bit of a roll call. Repeatedly, we hear the all, which insists that this list is inclusive, representative of everything that is. The whole psalm is an invitation to all creation and all creatures to join in giving praise. Psalm 148 comes at the end of the book of Psalms. It's one of five hallelujah psalms. Now, overall, the book of Psalms are very poetic. Throughout the 150 psalms we find in the Bible, there are words of lament. There are calls to dance and celebrate, reminders of the frustrations and pains that people are feeling and experiencing. Over this past year, we might have had many reasons to look at the psalms for solace, for comfort, even for guidance. And yet, as we end this year, the lectionary lifts up this psalm, 148, a hymn of praise. Now, if we're being fair, the whole lectionary rotates through different scripture passages on a three-year cycle. But each year after Sunday, each year, the Sunday after Christmas, the lectionary turns our attention back to this psalm. The gospel story changes. We read different letters from Paul. But again, year after year, we come back to this hymn of praise. The celebration of Christmas, the sounds of which still ring in our ears and the joy of which still resounds in our hearts is an important new beginning in the life of humankind. We spent the past month waiting for the birth of Christ. We spent the past week celebrating the birth of Christ. And now we come back and hear this call to praise. Psalm 148 reminds us that no aspect of life remains untouched by the redemptive promise of the Christmas season. It is clear that incarnation and creation are linked. And for that, we and all creation alongside us find no response other than praise. It is this calling, this vocation that connects us. Everything and everyone are identical and being addressed by the psalm. From the sun to the moon, from wild animals and flying birds, from the stormy winds to all the kings of the earth. In the midst of this mystery, the richness and the diversity of the created world, the psalm advocates for a vocation of praise, which unites all there is before a compassionate creator. In churches, we talk a lot about vocation and calling. We try and determine just what it is God is calling us to do in the world. We try and discern how we live out our vocation. It's ongoing work. We think about what school to go to, what to major in, what job to take, where to volunteer, how to use the gifts of God in the world. And we know the big guideposts along the way. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. But yet we are always still seeking and discerning. As Friedrich Buechner tells it, we are always seeking that place where our deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. And this is all good, hard, important work. 
But our psalm today is reminding us that vocation is both communal and individual. We and all creation alongside us are called to praise. Professor Walter Brueggemann says that praise is a duty and a delight. It's the ultimate vocation of humankind, indeed all of creation. Above all else, we live lives beginning and ending in praise. Yes, it is a duty, a way to respond to God with gratitude for all that we have been given, but it is also a delight. Praising God is what we were created to do. You know that old song, all God's creatures have a place in the choir? Well, I think what Psalm 148 is reminding us are these words, this song, all God's creatures have a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire, and some just clap their hands or paws or anything you got now. You see, these, this is part of the beauty of Psalm 148. The psalmist points out that fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy winds are all fulfilling God's command. Each are individually a part of creation, and each are created for a different task. The flying birds don't need to be the creeping things on the earth. God created both. And the call on both is this ultimate vocation of praise. In this long litany of God's creation and the extensive cast of characters, we are all created and announced as good. We give praise to the Lord when we can acknowledge that we are good, when we can acknowledge our own identity and live into exactly what it is God has created us to be. To praise the Lord is to display the God's glory by being the creatures that God designed us to be. All creatures, simply by existing, are a chorus of praise to our makers. We don't have to be anything more and we don't have to be like anyone or anything else. We all have a place in the choir. But what do we do with this hallelujah psalm when we just aren't able to find a voice for giving praise? When we don't feel like we can be a part of the chorus, when we feel like we have nothing more to give, when praise is the furthest thing from our lips? Psalm 148 and the Psalms before it demand that we recognize that praise does not spring from the delusion that things are better than they are, but rather for the human capacity for joy. Only when we see this can we understand that both lamentation and exaltation can be forms of praise. We all find ourselves in periods of lament and periods of contentment, the psalmist explains that the hopeful, comforting message that we are not isolated or alone in our vocation of praise. As one theologian puts it, when our own song and spirit is silenced, praise still fills the space around us. In times of personal darkness, we can gather for worship, even virtually. We can hear the familiar hymns and carols, we sit outside on porches and listen to the birds of the air. We hike through the fields and see the swaying trees. And we let this creation, these creatures, these companions, praise God for us until we can find our voice again. And so we come back year after year to this psalm to be reminded of our call to praise to be reminded that heaven and nature are singing, to be reminded that we, all of us, all of God's creation, have a place in the choir. Amen.
In gratitude, we respond to the many ways that God has supported us. You may give online through the ways shown on your screen, or you can mail a check to the church. Let us give generously as God has so generously given to us. Let us pray. Holy God, maker of heaven and earth, we praise you for your great creation that you have established and filled with abundant life. From the critters in the depths of the sea to the ones that soar above, from the endless parade of waves that cheer upon the shore to the drifting clouds that make their way across the sky without a care. We praise you for this sacred day, one among many others like it and yet so beautiful still. For everything, Lord, we give you praise. And we ask for forgiveness for the ways we have not seen the beauty that engulfs us, that resounds in every bird song and sparkles as your image in the eyes of all of those we encounter. On the heels of your arrival and toward the close of this so disorienting a year, we pray for the healing of this world, healing where illness thrives in body, mind, and spirit, we pray for justice where the pangs of oppression and its many forms run rampant, for love where the toxicity of hate degrades and destroys the hearts of many. We pray for peace where civility and unity are under threat, where there is fear and uncertainty as much outside our doors as there is in the depths of our souls. We pray for hope for those on the edge of beds, those at the bedside who give or receive care, and those who sit on the bed's edge as on the edge of life, contemplating either its inevitability or expediting its arrival. Of these things, O oh God, we pray fervently. May our hands work to serve as yours so that together we may do our part in building the community of your kingdom here on earth and fulfill the wholeness to which we are called. Give us the strength to carry the light of Christmas into a blaze of hope for the new year. And so we ask these things and the countless needs unspoken in the name of the one deserving of all glory and praise and making all things new. Your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. into a world celebrating the birth of Christ. And as we go, take with you the love of Christ. Go and serve the world and know that you have a place in the choir. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.